Hey everybody, we're going to talk a little bit about how these gauges work, the, the wiring and things of that nature, um, as well as discuss some of the things that are on, I think, uh, Roadrunner's website, uh, John Strink. So um, if he's out there, uh, certainly again, not trying to prove anybody wrong or anything like that. This is just my understanding of how things work, but um, some of this seemed kind of uh, confusing to me, so hopefully I can clarify a little bit. Um, so let's take a look at some of the diagrams that John has on his website. We can kind of walk through these. Um, the first one I'm showing here, and, I, and I've redrawn these just so we can walk through them um, and do some pointing out to everything. So uh, what we have here, basically uh, some of the main components is you have the frame for the Jeep, which is what your uh, everything's grounded to. We have the block for the engine. Um, and on that block, of course, we have the battery in the engine compartment, we have the temp sensor, um, and then also in the, the Jeep we have the fuel tank, which has the fuel level sending unit. Um, I, I didn't pull the voltage gauge in the voltmeter or the, the oil pressure gauge, just because they're not tended, they don't tend to be the ones that have issues, it's the, the fuel gauge and the temp gauge. So uh, let's talk about those a little bit. So as far as wiring, you have a 12 volt source coming from the battery over to point I on the fuel gauge. And as we mentioned earlier, there's actually an internal voltage regulator or step down or whatever you want to call it. It's just a resistor essentially that goes from a 12 volt and steps it down to five volts, which is what both the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge uh, operate off of. So this means that if we could just eliminate this 12 volt source we can, and provide just a 5 volt power to point A, um, it would feed both the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. So that internal voltage regulator is kind of a point of failure. Um, but attached to the, the fuel gauge you also have the sending wire that goes over to the level indicator and you also have the sending wire going down to the temp sending unit on the block. Now it's important to notice that obviously the block is grounded, the frame is grounded. The other things that we need to make sure are grounded is the temperature gauge and that's something that needs to be uh, ensured that that happens when it's installed inside the main cluster. You lose this ground here, you will burn the gauge up. If you lose the ground from your, your fuel tank, which I guess I should have that drawn on here, that that needs to have a ground. If you were to lose that ground, you're not going to burn up the, the gauge. You're just not going to read it properly. Um, same thing with the temp sensor. If you lose that ground because it's grounded to the block, you're not going to burn up the gauge. So this guy is very, very crucial. Uh, I haven't determined that you necessarily need a ground here, but I have been making sure that during testing, I always have one. Um, so if we take this and look at the, the diagram that John also provides on his website, this, this is that diagram. Um, I, there is some confusion, at least on my part, uh, on some of this, but essentially let's walk through it. So we have the incoming voltage, which should be a 12 to 15 volts as he's indicated. We go through this R1. This is that voltage regulator, that voltage step down, which the way that's shown here, um, appears it's in series, but at the same time appears to have a ground, which would suggest it's now in parallel. So there's some confusion there, um, and, and that's reiterated on the, the, the schematic that John has provided. You see the incoming 12 volts, R1, it's actually in parallel with R2, R3 combination, and R4, R5 combination. Um, and I think that he does, he's actually got these, uh, this R5 and this R3 swap. So you can see we come in with 12 volts here, go through R2, that goes down to the fuel sending unit and that's he's got labeled as R5 so on this diagram those are actually backwards um, and, and you'll see here in a second that I've actually kind of corrected some of that on another drawing um, but anyhow 12 volt comes in drops down to 5 volts which is supplied both to the fuel gauge and to the temperature gauge which is again this point A and we're going to take advantage of that here in a little while um, so I'm not too sure that this is correct. I actually believe that R1 should be in series with the combination of R2 and R5 and also in the combination of R4 and R3. So um, we'll, we'll kind of show you that modification. What we're going to propose is actually eliminating this voltage regulator and just providing a 5 volt uh, power supply to point A 